Welcome to the GIS Base Pack version 8 introductory video. First, in this video, I'd like to show you our directories within the program. This is where we can open, save, and import designs. So here I will go up to File and Open because right now I have nothing up on my screen. When I click Open, my directory dialog box does appear. Here I have my different drives. I also have the import dialog. This top section here allows me to make different directories. So in here I can make different, in a sense, folders for different designs, uh, different clients, or however you choose. Right now I do have nothing in here, so I first have to make a directory. So in here, I will type a directory, and this one I will name first directory. As I type it in here, I can then add it to my directories down below. When I click this button right here, looks like a little piece of paper going to a folder. And when I do that, now I have that directory. In that directory, it shows me how many designs I have currently in there and the date it was made. And uh, right now I have no design, so there is zero. I can add another directory. And that's just by going in here, highlighting it, and naming it something else. I can add it again. Just the second button over, I can add the directory. The next thing that I'd like to show you is how we can rename the directories. If I do select a directory, you can see that it does highlight red. With it highlighted red, if I'd like to rename it, I can come up here, I can rename this directory, and then click on this X to Y. When I click on it, you'll see that directory does rename and you do have to make sure that you are selected on it in order to rename it. If you're not selected on it, it may rename something else. The next button over is to move the directory up and then the next one to that is to move the directory down. So we can reorganize our directories. If we'd like to take this one and move it down, we can take that fourth button over and left click and we can move it down. We could also move it back up. Now you can see I only have two in here, so it's only just switching it. Um, but if we do have more, let's add another directory. And I'll add that. And then it, we can move it down. It is selected. You see it is selected with the, the highlight. And I could also move it up. If we would like to alphabetize our directories, we can click this button right here and this will sort them. I left click and it alphabetizes them. So these buttons up here are for this main directory box that you see right here. Again, each directory will hold several designs and what we'll see at the bottom here is once we do get some designs in, uh, we'll see those appear. Speaking of designs, when we import designs such as uh, a DST file, um, what I would like to do is make sure that we do have the correct disk formatting options. This is important because sometimes it will, uh, if you do not have the correct uh, settings for your trims and jump stitches that you will not have the appropriate trims. So down at the bottom of this dialog box, I'll click on select disk format. And when I left click on that, down at the bottom, you'll see that I have an A drive, B drive, email, CD, and I'd like to do this with both drives. So I do have A drive selected. Here I have the Tajima format selected. 
And the important part here is trimming after jump stitch. Trimming after jump stitch, if I highlight that, I need to change that to three. Because in DST code, three jump stitches equal a trim. If you have it longer than that, uh, you may not see your trims in your design. The next one down, jump, st jump stitches for trimming, highlight that, and also change that to three. I will then click on B and make sure that is also the same. Three here and three here. Once I do do that, we'll go ahead and press OK. So now for any designs that are imported as DST, my jump stitches to trims should now be correct. Typically designs will appear in our uh, in our directory after we save them. Um, we can, in addition, import designs maybe that we've gotten through email, have downloaded, um, or have, you know, just a whole bunch of designs in a different library that we'd like to import. We can import several different file formats, but here I will click the import button on the left hand side. Once I click on import, you can see that it does go to a you know, certain directory and you can see that I have transport code files as well as DST files. Here I would like to find the folder uh, of designs that I'd like to import or save to my directory. And I have this on my desktop and I have a folder called EMB fonts. In my EMB fonts, I do have an alphabet that I would like to import. In this uh, alphabet, I'm going to choose the DST file, and I can select one, I can select all, and where it matters to select it is after I hit the OK button. Once I press OK, you can now see that all my letters are in here. And what I'd like to do is select them all and bring them into a directory and copy them in there. You can see in here that I do have 26 designs and I would like to select them all. And in order to select them all, just down here at the bottom on the left hand sides, we have select all designs in the current directory. If I left click this, this selects all my designs. Conversely, if I had like to deselect I can click on deselect all designs, which is the next one. If I would like to only select, you know, the ones that I um, <clears throat> that I choose rather than all of them or none of them, I can simply left click on each one. By left clicking on each one, you see that it highlights yellow, and to deselect, I can left click on it again. So left click will select or deselect depending upon if it's highlighted or not. Whether or not you have all of them highlighted or just one of them highlighted, the next couple buttons will apply. So first of all, let's highlight them all. So select all designs. The third button over is copy the selected designs. If I select this, when I hit copy, my regular directory um, dialog box appears and I can say what directory I would like to put it in. I choose the directory and then hit save. Once I do that, all of those files will be copied to that directory. After they're copied, I do have a new um, dialog box that does appear and with this, I have some different functions that I can utilize. Within each one of these designs, I can select them and use the buttons down here at the bottom. Once I do have a design selected, first of all, you can see the name of the file. You can see the number, which uh, we don't have a number associated with it because it is a DST file the new number that is going to be saved within our directory and the name of the design. So this is actually 
uh, the name and I can actually input customer name as well. So if I'd like to see the directory that it's going into, I can click here. And right now I have nothing in that directory, so it's showing me no information. This is just to show you, you know, what directory it's going into. I can hit close. The next one is the header information. The header information is also the design information. If I left click here, I now go into another new dialog box. This dialog box does show me a lot of the um, design properties. In here, I can even edit the design properties. If I want to rename the design as far as in the name category, I can go ahead and highlight this and say A fishtail 4 inch. Then I can also give it a customer name if I'd like. If I'm doing this for a specific customer, I can type that in. Let's say I do it for my monogram customers. I can type that in. I can also set prices for each design if I'd like. And that's right in here. In this next box, we do get the information about the design, how large it is, the starting and ending point. Um, so this is my X and Y. And typically this is showing me, you know, that's it's starting and stopping in the middle. Um, these are the amount of data sets or, you know, stitches or commands that is in there. The number, or I'm sorry, the needle that is associated with this design for the transport code. Um, right now it always defaults to needle one for our DST files. There are no stops. There are four trims, no needle changes, no boring, no sequence, and um, there's no looping or cording right now. If we would like to change uh, the needle that is associated with this design, so here it's saying needle one is um, going to stitch first, uh, you can see needle one, and then at 935 stitch point, there's trimming, 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 the needle off, trimming, and it goes back to, to center. We can also input any comments in here uh, if we'd like about the design that we'll save with the design. So in here, um, if you'd like to say um, specialized monogram font for embroidery, or you know any information that you would like to input. That's really up to you on what you want to do. Um, like I said, if you do want to associate it with a different needle for the ZSK format or the TC code, I can click here on change the design colors. Once I click change the design colors, here um, it is defaulting to the first uh, default color or needle one color. If I'd like to change the color of the design that shows here, I can uh, choose a color from my different thread libraries. And if I'd like to choose a specific thread library, I can use this drop down arrow. Um, here, I typically use the um, Madeira polyester. And if that's this one right here, if I click on it or double click on it, it now goes to my Madeira colors and you can see all the colors and they are numbered here um, with the appropriate numbers. Um, one thing about these colors which is kind of nice is that I can either um, select the color or select the number on the right hand side. So if I left click here and select needle one which is selected in my design I can uh, come over to the left hand side on my color table and double click on the color that I want it to be. So if I left double click, you can now see that it's changing to needle number 1839. 
Now this design information will save in the transport code as well as within the directory. The other thing that I can do is that if I do know of a specific color number I want it to be, uh, I can simply type that in. And actually before I do that, um, any time that I would like to see the design redrawn with the new color, I left click on the design itself here. So if I left click here, it's going to show me the design in the new color. What's nice about this is that I can colorize my designs that I import with DST files and uh, recolorize it with the correct colors here. So if you have several needle changes, um, you'll see that they are selected, you know, whatever is being used. And then um, I can actually uh, assign the correct colors and then that save with the transport code. Again, if I would like to type in a number, let's say I do know the specific number that I'd like to have it stitch in, I can select here with a double click on the number, so left double click, and now you'll see that highlight blue. I can start typing in the number, and then if I hit enter, it will now change to that new number. And that's within the thread library that I have selected. So if I'd like to see it in that new color, I just left click here and I can see it in that new color. Once I am happy with my changes, I will hit OK. Once I hit OK, I'll go ahead and hit yes, I do want to save these settings. And now you can see the design is now blue, needle one is blue, and uh, it's now saving uh, with that specific information. I can also get to the design header outside of this um, importing designs. So if you ever need to get into here after the design's been imported, you can actually access design header through the program once we're in the program. The other thing that I'd like to show you here is how we can actually change the needle. To change the needle down at the bottom here, I have this show needle stop change table button. It's the second button over. If I left click on that, you can see the needle stop table. Um, if I'd like to assign it a different needle, now then it will also assign it a different color. I can left click and once I left click, uh, it now is saying instead of needle one, needle five. I'll click OK. Once I do that, you'll now see needle five appear. And if I want to change the color for needle five, I can click on change the design colors. I can select needle five. I'll change it to a different color and then press OK. I'll go ahead and save that. And now you can see it is now that dark red along with needle five. You have the ability to see the design drawn or kind of come up in a whole nother screen. There's the design, you can see there's the information, and I'll go ahead and close that out. So this button's actually the same as what we would see uh, behind here in our uh, importing of designs. We can recalculate the statistics. Um, if we do change certain settings in here, uh, such as the stitch length and some other things, um, like the, the table with use thread, um, and then this one right here is select histogram setting. And if I select this, um, it's going to show me everything here. Um, I can deselect it. I typically leave this all selected uh, so that I can see everything in my design, all the special commands. So once we are done with this, um, we can press OK. And once we press OK, you can see all these things have changed in here. This button here is the same as that draw design button uh, in the design header that we saw. Um, so if I click on here, you can see that design and there's that information. I'll go ahead and close that out. So we can do this for every single one of our designs before we copy it over or before we hit OK. Um, we can also delete certain designs uh, if we don't want them. So I can always hit the do not um, copy or the trash bin. And once I select that, that will delete the B 
and you can see the design number goes away so I do have that open slot um, but typically our design numbers will um, will be whatever's open next so I'll go ahead and press OK and once I press OK it's bringing all of them in to that directory and now you can see all this different information so here is the information for that first one that we did change uh, you can see the date that we brought it in or you know the date last time it was saved and modified um, and how many stitches it has so on and so forth we can also take this design and copy it um, or rename it I'm sorry um, if we click here let's say I would like to rename it to a monogram or I'm sorry this is this would be the customer information um, so I'm gonna name it Andrea and if I click here that will now change same thing with this information as well as this information so if I do want to um, change anything here that's where the rename is now there are also a couple buttons down at the bottom here that look similar to um, what we had when we were importing um, we do have copy the selected designs and then we also have move them copy them will take this design and make a copy into another directory so whatever I have selected again you can select everything or nothing well if you select nothing then this button won't appear but if you select something uh, you can select it with a single click and you can select several if you want or just one you know it's the same functionality here but if I take this one and I would like to copy it to another directory I can click on this button down here left click and I would like to go to another directory and then save so it's copying it if I'd like to actually move it out of this directory into this another directory um, with it selected I will then select move selected designs when I select move des selected designs I'll, I'll select here and then hit save and um, it's saying that there is a design with the same number so do you want to um, give it a new design number if you do you can you know you can select it and give it one or you can say unused number or unused version unused number will give it a new number an unused version will give it a new uh, transport code uh, extension or 1.01 .01 in a sense so unused version there's 1.01 .01. unused number would be two but I would like to have it as 1.00 um, and I'd like to overwrite it instead um, so I'll go ahead and hit overwrite and when I overwrite now that fishtail is moved out of the second directory into another directory so moving and copying are two different things um, so with this selected um, you see that you also have the design header here so you have the design header in several of these locations um, when you select you know copy the selected designs um, you can get to the design header and all that good stuff um, a lot of this you can get to uh, in in the other um, windows so I can select the design header this will have all the same information um, that we did before and you can change it in here as well and and that will save with the design you also have this uh, select disk format now this was what we did before with DSTs it is very important that we have three and three here the next button is very helpful when searching for designs if I left click on the little binoculars I now go into a new dialog box that allows me to search by different options here whenever I left click on an option it will show me the option that I can search for right now number is selected I can remove that if I'd like and search by name 
or I can search by multiple by just left clicking on the multiple. I'm just going to remove them all. And I'm going to search simply by number. If I want to search for, you know, a specific number, I just type it in. Now, I also want to left click here to search all my directories. I'll press OK. Once I press OK, you'll notice that this little button is now highlighted. And it's showing me that in another directory, there's nothing here. If I go to rename, there's nothing here. If I go to second directory, it's showing me that number here's number 18. So that allows me to quickly search, you know, for my designs that I can open if I want. Um, I can turn the search off just by left clicking here and we'll deselect and remove and then press OK. And now you can see everything back up. So searching for designs is, you know, very helpful with this button uh, in our directories. The next button has to do with our machine memory and um, if we are connected to a machine where we can push our designs over. And that is access to the ZSK memory. If I click here, um, it will show us what is in our shared folder for the machine. And this is where my shared folder is, um, and that's what I can put into my uh, machine directory. Um, we're just going to deselect this and go, um, go through this later on. So to you know, get in and out of there, you can select that. The next thing is that if I have a design that I'd like to delete, I can certainly delete that design. Um, again, you can select multiple by left clicking. We can deselect or select only what we want. And if I'd like to select this one and delete it, I can hit the little trash can. And if I left click on that, um, it's saying, do you want to delete the data only, the data and the header information, the de he data, header, and pictogram, or delete completely? I'm going to delete completely, press OK, and now it's gone. What else is nice about these directories is that I can not only view my design by the name and the information, but also by pictograms. If I left click on the pictograms, a new box will appear. You can see what is um, selected. If I left click on it, um, it will highlight it just like we did in our um, when we saw it by information. So once we do that, we can close that or we can double click on it, but we'll close that and now you can see they're selected. And then we can choose what we want to do with those. I'll go ahead and deselect everything. And that is a brief introduction of the directories. On the left hand side, you do have the different modes that you can actually uh, switch between. You have the module mode, uh, which allows you to select and do layout things. You have the edit mode, which you can edit stitching. You have the coordinate mode, which allows for punching. You also have text mode, or monogramming, you have picture mode, you have uh, drawing block mode, and drawing mode. With the drawing mode, we can actually draw with vectors. If you left click on this, you now see that your cursor can turns into um, a crosshair with the lines. And they, these lines are actually uh, optional to show. You can change that within your settings. But up here, this um, toolbar right here shows me all the different shapes I can draw with. So for example, if I wanted to draw with a rectangle, I can left click on the rectangle. I also have my insert mode on. This is also overwrite, so if you do want to edit. With this off, I cannot draw anything. I do have to turn it on and then select what I would like to draw with. So for example, we were, are just going to left click, hold, and drag to draw a square. 
and this is, again, this is in my drawing mode. If I go to my coordinate mode, I do not have this as a stitch area. In my coordinate mode, that's where I can draw stitch areas. And then you can see, too, that as I change between different modes, I will have different functionality at the top. So if I go to edit mode now, my functionality changes. Uh, this is very similar to edit mode and, and coordinate mode or punch mode because in here I can edit stitches, in here I can actually draw stitches or edit uh, shapes that I've drawn. Then we have module mode and in module mode uh, this is where we can select things but here I cannot select it because it is a drawing. So these two um, icons here on the left hand side have to do with each other. The drawing block mode is now where I can select it and change shape. I can change, I have several options up here at the top. So these two down at the bottom are specifically for drawing. The picture mode is specifically for your background image. And then you have these four which have to do more with stitching. On the right hand side of this uh, toolbar, I do have the zoom in and zoom out. So I can zoom up, place my cursor, if I left click on zoom, uh, my cursor turns into a crosshair, or I'm sorry, into a magnifying glass with a plus sign, and I can zoom in. I can do the opposite and zoom out. And zoom out is a one click or zoom down and zoom in, you can activate it and left click, hold and drag and actually zoom in or you can zoom in just by placing your cursor over the area and left click one time. You also have the one to one, which is 100%. You also have where you can uh, zoom all pieces of the design into the, the space as close as possible. You also have zoom at a selected module, which is the same as what we see here because I do have this square selected. And then we have a zoom factor. If we say that we want to zoom at 200%, I would just zoom 2. Um, if I want to zoom at 50%, 0 0.5, press OK. So those are the kind of basics um, for, for these. And as we go into uh, more training and videos, uh, you'll see how to use these tools uh, specifically. So the coordinate mode, if I click here, uh, I can now start actually drawing with stitches. Um, so you can see as I just make cl clicks, I am actually drawing with stitches and you can see in my stitch display on the right hand side what I am doing. And then I can actually switch to an area if I want to draw an area. And there are different ways to draw my areas, um, you know, with the with the different tools, left clicks and right clicks. Now, if I go to the edit mode, I can actually go in and select a stitch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, and we can actually select a stitch. Um, actually right now I'm not selecting a stitch I apologize I'm actually inserting a stitch right now because I am in that insert overwrite tool so I'm gonna hit um, backspace and delete that turn this off and then go to a stitch and select it now when I go to a stitch and select it you can now see and I'll zoom in a little bit further that that stitch is selected and I have an arrow pointing to the left and that's the direction of my stitches so I can utilize arrow keys, left and right arrow keys, to go back or forward one stitch at a time. And you can also see it in my stitch display. Let me go ahead and zoom out. Uh, so this has to do with you know, individual stitch points where you can go in, you can enter in functions, you can edit individual stitches, you can add stitches. There's a lot that you can do in here. Um, so let's go ahead and zoom even further. And now if I go to the module mode and left click, I now can select my areas and move them around, um, you know, within my screen. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, this is where I can do a lot of layout type of options. 
Um, you can see you can rotate, uh, you can mirror, um, you have different layout options at the top, and we'll get into these uh, with, with different sections. Um, you also have the ability in module mode um, to view your, well actually in any mode, to view your film, um, and that's going to be like your stitch sequence. Uh, and things like that and that's where you can also change certain things in here so in module mode you do not see your stitch display but in the edit mode and the punch mode you, you do see your stitch display um, so next um, as you saw before that our toolbars will change as we go into different modes or if you know into the different modules here um, and then Oh, one more thing I forgot is your text mode. So in your text mode, this is where I can type in text and, um, you know, choose different fonts. I can put them on, you know, different uh, lines or uh, text paths if I'd like. But as I was saying, as we change between the different modes, um, I will see different toolbars appear at the top. And um, with these toolbars, if I would like to move them and dock them, uh, I can certainly do so. You can see that I can select it. I can have it float into my design workspace, um, or I can dock it. So these things will change, but what will not change is up here at the top. And up here at the top, we have um, New, where you can open a new design. We have Open a Select. Uh, an existing design that's where we get our directories we also have save so in save this is where we would save into our directory so if I hit save right now um, it'll ask me how I want to you know uh, do the starting and ending point and I'll do center center here when I do that um, this is about 95 percent of the time of what I do with designs um, I can also choose the original point of where I started, which was somewhere in here underneath. Um, that does not have to do with my drawing. So I can do the original point and end at the original point, which would be the end of the section, or I can end it at that starting point. I can also select a coordinate, top left, top center, you know, so on and so forth. Um, also, I can do a free um, or a selected, or I'm sorry, our defined X and Y coordinate, which have to do with our rulers here. Um, so I can do that as well. And then same thing for the ending point. But typically I do center center. I can change that, you know, later on if I'd like. Um, we will show this when we're saving our design. We can have the ending needle equal the start needle for the next design. I don't use this very often. Um, we can show the stitches to the start and ending point. Um, we will save this and hit OK. When we hit OK, it opens up our directories. And um, here, this is where I can save the design. So here I want to name it 2. I want to name it a test. I can put in the customer information. Uh, this time we'll put in a different, oops, put in a different name if we want. And again, we can change all this. Now I hit save. So you'll see here that there's, it's now in another directory at the number two spot. So if I go to file and save, it'll save right on top. It's grayed out right now. So if I do make changes to it and hit save, it'll save right on top. But if I want to save as, you know, and change all these settings, I can do that. I can also save as a new version. So when I click on save new version, um, this will come up, but when I press OK here, it will save it as 2.01. It doesn't allow you to actually name it, it just opens it, or it just saves it to the next version number. Now there are also a couple different ways that we can save the design to write to our machine. So if we go to File and Save As, 
We'll leave this as is and press OK. When we save as, we then want to hit export because now we want to save it to either um, a USB device uh, or maybe you know to a shared folder. That's where we click the export. Here we can choose our format. This is the ZSK transport code, which will hold all the information that we had talked about um, in here and in our design header. And we'll press OK. Once we do that, we can now save it you know, to whichever um, hard drive or um, file folder that you want to save it to. It will default to the number in our design here. So we have 0 .000, you know, or I'm sorry, um, it's typically eight digits. And here it's Z01 because this was 2.01 or a new version. So the Z01 or the numbers behind the Z show us what version it is. So this is, the, in a sense, it's the second version because the first one is 00. I can hit save and then it will save it to that directory or export it to that directory. Now another way that we can export is if we open our directory up. Um, right now we have 2.01 opened, but I want to export 2.0. Um, without it being up on our screen, I can go into you know whichever directory I want, select the design, and while it is selected, I would right click on it and select export. When I right click on it and select export, here are my file formats that do appear. Here we're going to choose the ZSK transport code, press OK, and now I can save it as Z00. Here's the Z01 and here's the Z00. So that is the difference between version numbers right there and then design numbers which is in the front here. I hit save. So I have two versions now saved as ZSK files or transport code files. If I would like to take this design and actually uh, get the GIS file and email it to somebody, I can right click here and select email. This is where I can select the GIS format, press OK. It may take some time, but your default mail client will appear and it'll have the design attached already as well as the subject uh, as the design file. So in here you can um, go ahead and address it to whoever and send it off. So it does work directly with your email client uh, or your email program. And this right here is Microsoft Outlook. I'm just going to close this out. and. Um, since I didn't send it, that's okay. Um, also, if you would right click and select export, you can also save it as a GIS format outside the internal directories. So you can save it as a GIS format like within your My Documents or whatever it may be. Um, so you do have the GIS direct format as well as the stitch file formats that you see here. We'll press OK. Actually, I'll hit cancel there. Sorry, we'll cancel everything out. Now the next button, um, you have the save, and this is actually save as a new format, uh, or I'm sorry, a new version. So here we'll press OK, and now it changes it to 2.02. .02. So this is save, which will save on top of the existing one, and then this is the new version. The next one is save as. So this is where you would actually do that save as function like we had up here under file and save as. The next one is saving into the ZSK memory if you do have that set up, as well as um, embroider. So this will push it over to the machine if you do have a machine connected. Uh, we will have another video on this um, as far as how to work it with the machine. You also have the print functionality where you can print the worksheet out. You have undo and redo, as well as cut, copy, and paste. And this is, you know, if you are selected on something, um, we can cut, copy, and paste it. 
here is the design header like we had before in when we were in our directory. Here's the design header um, where we can see all the appropriate information. And again, we can change things in here. We can also change it on screen. The next one is our needle or stop changes. And when we click on this, this is similar to what we saw before. If I see that uh, right now I have needle one and I don't want this to stitch in needle one, I want it to stitch on needle four instead, I select it and then press OK. Now you'll see that change on screen. It actually shows, it actually shows me uh, all in my design information too um, what, what needle I'm on. If I go to the punch mode, um, I can select it and I can see that I am in needle four. So that's where you can see it as well. Uh, back in module mode, um, again, the, these, are, uh, these are all available uh, to you you know, in any mode. Um, this one, the set start endpoint. When I click on this, I, it's similar to exporting. This is where I can set it up, um, you know, without going into that save function. So this is the, you know, typically it's center center, um, but you can choose anything that you'd like here. So we'll press OK. So there's that center point right there. The film strip, um, this is going to turn it on or off. So you can see that, you know, the film on how things are stitching out and the order that they're stitching out. Here we can insert a border. So these are different just uh, design um, elements that we can insert. And I have uh, different um, categories here. So let's say I want to insert a circle. Um, I can change the size in here. Um, that's proportionate, and this is X, and this is Y. I can also um, rotate it, and I can skew it, too. Um, I can choose to have a border or no border, or satin stitch border. Um, you can have a running stitch border, or you can have it as a fill. And with the fill, you can have a border or no border. Um, there are quite a few things in here that we will cover later. Um, but within each one of these categories, whatever is selected, um, you can change the settings in here. And these settings are similar to what you would have in your, um, uh, in your properties within the punch function. So let's say I wanted to insert it only with a satin border. I can choose my width. Um, there's a lot of different things I can do. I'll go ahead and press OK, and there's my circle. Now it may look a little off to you, and it's probably because my screen is not calibrated. Um, but that is the insert border. Then you also have the help menu. And with the help menu, if you left click on this, you see that your cursor turns into a little question mark. And if you go over any one of the icons here, um, if I click on the save, uh, the new version icon and left click, once I do so, it will show me in the help system what that icon does. So this is really helpful uh, if you're not sure what something does. So you can always hit the help button and then click on the icon. Oh, that one doesn't exist. And there's the stop, you know, what the stop function does. Then you also have um, the connection and stitch calculation refresh. Um, it just kind of refreshes things as you change things around. Next, you do have several different um, headings here at the top, and they all will do something different. File is where we find a lot of our uh, functions for new, open, and save, um, as well as setting up our machine path to connect to the machine. Um, the next functions, you know, edit, display, block, Block is more of um, kind of with our module mode, um, you know, our sections and the designs. We have settings, the picture or the image that you might have in the background, drawing. This is where, you know, you'd use in your um, drawing mode, um, layout, 
you know, what is showing, if you want the options to be a little bit larger to see, um, you know, you can set up different things. Window, um, this is where if you have like multiple designs open, you can arrange them differently. And then in your help, um, if you did install the, uh, the additional tutorials, you can click on here and that will open up those tutorials. I do want to open this and it will allow you to kind of go through and go through the different um, functionality here. So this is really helpful um, as like a quick tutorial. Um, and you can click forward to continue, you know, and click through the different things. You can also, we can also get out of here, but there's forward. So lots of different things in here. Let's go ahead and uh, exit out of here. And um, you can, you know, view different things in there. So that's always at your fingertips. Um, so with that, um, that is kind of a, a little introduction to the program. And please watch our other videos. Thank you.